Welcome back everybody to our Intermediate and Advanced Civil 3D training video series. In the previous video we took a look at pipe rules and structure rules and setting up some label styles to have them in our drawing. This video we're going to take a look at creating actual parts lists. So importing the pipes into the parts list and defining those parts lists so we have them available for when we want to draw in our networks. Now before we can even do a parts list, it is a really good idea to make sure absolutely everything is set up in order for you to be able to create the parts lists. Now what I mean by setup is having some pipe styles. Now I have imported a few styles from my previous template just so they're here and I know what they look like. Having our pipe rule sets done so we can set those up. Having our label styles ready to go. And I have a number of them here that I did import along with our structure styles. So I have structure styles for catch basins, manholes. I have structure rule sets. Again, it's similar to the ones that I created before and label styles to go with those structures. Now having all this set up is, like I said, extremely important because when we go to draw the parts, they will be forever tagged with what is set up when we create the parts list and in turn the pipe networks. So setting them all up is extremely important. Now, when we go to draw our pipes and our manholes, the labels are gonna use the actual defined size from the documents we had opened before. So 305 millimeters or 410 millimeters, whatever was from the concrete pipe catalogs and the PVC pipe catalogs. Now there is two ways of fixing this. There's probably more than two, but how you go about it, that's up to you. One of the first ways is back under parts builder and we can modify concrete pipe SI. Under our size parameters, I can edit my size parameters here. And this right here, we can pull the part size name to put in our label. And we can actually reset this back to the defaults. Although I'm not sure 100% what else it will affect within the program. But if we click on this drop down, we go parameter configure. Our part size name, I can turn that into table back into my values and this is where I can come in and I can type in 300 diameter 350 or sorry this was 375 450 500 uh, 525 and again make sure you remember the sizes so you can actually come in here and accurately fill this out so this is one way to do that. However, you'll lose the concrete pipe aspect. The other way, arguably harder, would be to go into each label individually and modify that label itself to do the correct pipe size. Now, if you only have 10 pipes in your drawing, not a huge deal. You got a few thousand pipes in your drawing and it could take quite a bit of time for you to modify all those labels. So this is one handy way of doing the pipe sizes and actually having the correct size here. However, I don't want to change mine. Um, I'll do it the other way. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to close this drawing and I'm going to not save this pipe catalog drawing that I've opened up. So back into Civil 3D now and I'm in my tool space under my settings tab. I'm going to expand pipe networks, something we haven't looked at yet. And I'm going to expand parts lists. And see that I already have a few in here. However, I'm just going to go ahead and delete them because I don't need them. I want to generate my own. So under parts list, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a parts list. I'm going to name this City of Calgary Storm Parts List. As, as I said before, the City of Calgary uses their own set of pipe sizes. And that's the only ones they use. Very rarely do they deviate from that. Under the pipes tab, we see new parts list. As soon as I hit apply, it should change, but I guess it doesn't. I'm going to right click on new parts list and go add a part family. Now again, knowing the city, we have PVC. 
and I'm going to add another part family for concrete pipe. So PVC pipe and concrete pipe. Once I have these headings in here, I can right click and I can go add a part size. Now this pipe table aligns exactly with what I typed into the parts builder. 100.94, that is what the, the pipe is specified as. And that's what I've typed it in as. Yes, the 0.94 is almost redundant, but I'm going to leave that in there along with the correct wall thicknesses. Now there is an add all sizes button, but however, be really careful with it when you go to select it. Um, especially when we go to do structures and I'll demonstrate why when we make the structures themselves. So I'm going to use all sizes in this case, and it's going to add in every single size, even though the majority of the ones I use will be 100 diameter, probably 200, 250, 300, 375, etc. So I'm going to add all sizes, and I'm going to make sure to change this material down here to PVC. My Manning's coefficient for PVC is 0 0.011. Again, feel free to fill that out. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, but um, like I said, once when you go to make the pipe parts list, make sure everything is set up correctly. Otherwise, it's a delete and redo to update all your options. So I'm going to hit OK, and we see that it's added the various pipe sizes in here for PVC. Now, not all of them, like I said, will be used. And to be honest, we didn't make rules for all of them. So when I look at this window, we have all the pipe sizes. We have the style of the pipe that's being used. And this is Storm, so I need to change this right away. And I can change it with this little Save button. I can change it to my Storm. If you don't update this and you go to start drawing your pipes in, they're going to take on a completely different style. And then this is where the, the annoying part of it is, is to set all of these up one by one. So my sanitary 200 diameter, this should be Storm, which we don't have a 200 diameter pipe. So I'm going to go to the 300 diameter. I'll do 300 diameter Storm. 375 storm and I'm going to fast forward the video and I'll be back in a moment. All right, now that's that, that is done. I'm going to go ahead and delete the few that here that I don't need because we will never, never use those, show them in a drawing, not even the smallest 200 PVC or 251 PVC with exception of the catch basin leads. So I'm gonna go and add part sizes again and I'm gonna purposely select 250 PVC and I'm gonna create these for my catch basin leads as well. And I'm gonna add another pipe size, which will be the 300 diameter PVC, and we'll see if Civil 3D lets me re-add it because it already exists. And it already exists, so it won't, unfortunately will not let me add it again. Now the problem with that is my 300 diameter storm rule is not set for 2% that the catch basin lead is. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my storm here, my 250 diameter storm catch basin, and I'm gonna move on to my concrete pipes. So I'm gonna right click on concrete pipes and add pipe size. Now I definitely will not use all of these either. However, you can add all sizes and then delete afterwards. It's, it's up to you. My Mannings is 0 0.013 and reinforced concrete is the material. So now I'll hit okay. And then I'll expand concrete pipe SI. And again, it has defaulted to sanitary probably because of what's set up in my commands down here. So I want storm. And then again, I have to set up the rules here. So I will go ahead and do that and I will speed the video up for it.
right. Now that that's done, there's a couple other options we can play around with. Render material. I never set any renders up within Civil 3D. It's not a visualization program. It's a design tool. If I want to render it with something, I'll throw it into an additional software, InfraWorks or Twinmotion, which is much easier to apply materials to. A final item here is a pay item. So if we had an Excel file of all the costs set up for these specific pieces, we could attribute a pay item to it and generate a, a rough report at the end that says this project will cost this much to build or to buy all the pieces for. So if your company has it set up, great. If not, um, I tend to leave it blank. So once the pipes are done, I'm just gonna hit okay just to get back into Civil 3D, just in case um, it crashes, I want it saved because that is a little bit of work to set that up. And I'm gonna edit that parts list again, and we should see this has now updated COC storm parts list. I'm gonna go to the structures tab after just double confirming everything here. I'm gonna go to the structures tab and expand, and I see right, right now what's in there is what's called a null structure. And unfortunately it's using the wrong style so I'm going to place it on my null structure. Now what this null structure is, it's, it's an invisible structure that connects two pipes together if there's no manhole. For example, if we are going from a tangent piece of pipe to a curved piece of pipe, this null structure would connect those two pipes together so we can ensure that we match the inverts of the pipes and they're connected and they're not just floating in space underground. Never, ever, ever delete this null structure. It is a very important piece. In terms of rules as well, um, I might actually make another rule to ensure that there is no drop between structures, just so this um, absolutely ensures that the pieces are connected together. So I will just quickly create a new rule. I'll just call it null structure. And under the rules, I want pipe drop across structure and I wanna ensure that that stays zero. We don't wanna change in structure at all, and I believe that is the only rule we want to add. That is correct. So I'll hit okay, I'll hit okay, I'll hit okay. And as you see, we can set them up within this window here as well. Now under parts list, I wanna right click and add a part family. This is, um, this is gonna be location specific and which one you use. Do we use them with frames, without frames? Um, what size do you want? Do you use rectangular bottom manholes with the round top? Do you use oblong ones? Or do you use concentric cylindrical with a rectangular top or with a round top? Again, this will be up to where you live in your jurisdiction. So I'm gonna use concentric cylindrical structure SI and then I also want to add in a rectangular structure for my catch basin. So rectangular structure slab top for my catch basin itself. So I hit okay. And we see that they are added to the list here now. So concentric cylindrical structure, I'm gonna right click and edit it. And this is where I'm gonna go and modify the pieces that I want. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna hit apply and okay because I wanna save everything. I don't wanna to have to redo it. I'm gonna show you why you don't select all the add all sizes button. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna select add all sizes because it's a handy button. It's gonna give me everything I need. I'm gonna hit okay. And Civil 3D is gonna pop up a warning that 8,400 part sizes are involved, but just 5,000 of them will be added. Click yes to continue. So I'm gonna hit yes. And I'm gonna let Civil 3D think for 10, 20, 30 seconds here while it adds all 5,000 pieces to my catalog. Now, the problem with this is you don't want, nor do you need this many options in your life. This list will appear when we're drawing the parts. This list is gonna appear if we need to swap parts. This list is going to drive you insane. So do not ever add all parts when it comes into structures. So concentric cylinder structure SI, add part size. I'm gonna pick a pretty, um, a pretty common diameter for where I live is 1200 diameter. And we can modify the cone heights, the floor heights, the wall thicknesses. I'm just gonna leave this default for now. Reinforce concrete. 
and um, set up the options in here that you need, but the only one I really want to add is 1200. So if I expand that, we see concentric cylindrical structure, 1200 diameter. This is not a sanitary manhole. This will be a storm manhole. And my rules, so as I said before, um, the rules don't really apply to manholes because we don't know if we're going to have a 0 0.03, a 0 0.06, a 0 0.15 drop. We don't know what kind of rule there's, there needs to be added, but I'm just going to add 0 0.03 for now to have it in my drawing. And I can change this rule on a per structure basis after I have it drawn in. Render material, again, same thing. Pay item, same thing. We're not going to attribute pay items to this. And then structure types, this is already set up, so I, I wouldn't change this. Now, moving on to the rectangular structure slab, we are going to come in here and we're going to add in our catch basin. Now, depending on where you live, they're going to be varying sizes. I'm going to place mine for a meter, a meter deep by two meters long. So it signifies an approximate catch basin. All the thicknesses I'm going to leave as per default. Make sure that's reinforced concrete and I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to set up this to be a storm catch basin. And I'm going to change the rules to catch basin rules. All right, that was just a pretty simple storm parts list for where I live, uh, my location in the world. I'm not going to go through and set up the sanitary parts list. It is exactly the same with the exception of we don't have a, a catch basin for, for our sanitary list. So no need to put a, a catch basin in that. We will have manholes, we'll have pipes. Again, the same sizes, but slightly different slopes. And that's where these rules come into play. Now let's take a look at the other options that we could add. There's ductile iron, corrugated metal, HDPE, corrugated HDPE, some egg-shaped pipes, and this will give you an, an indication of what they look like. Elliptical culverts, horizontal elliptical, concrete box culverts. So if you need to add any of these pieces, again, it's, it's the same rinse and repeat situation where we add them into the list. We define the settings, the styles, the rules, again, per jurisdiction basis for those. Structures, if we go add part family, we have a lot of inlets. There's inlets and outlets. It, again, depends what you're working on. I'm keeping it pretty simple in terms of just subdivision design here. Different kinds of structures with frames, without frames, and then junction structures. So if we have an underground box, for example, a rectangular junction structure that the storm water flows into and then it collects two other storm lines and carries on. Um, pretty typical where I live to put a manhole for those. So again, just a quick recap. Um, we created a parts list for our storm parts here. I'm not going to go through the sanitary one. It is the same. The same general steps, the same general sizes. So in the next video, we're going to look at creating a pipe network and we're going to start drawing the items in. There's going to be a surface involved with it. Uh, I'll provide survey points via a link in the description of the next video for those survey points.